What's going on everyone? So we got some Laker news in regards to Jalen Hood Shafino. So Los Angeles Lakers, per reports from Shams and Chris Haynes and various others, uh, that the Lakers are declining Jalen Hood Shafino's third year rookie scale option, which will make him a unrestricted free agent in the offseason. So this can go a couple of ways, right? One, he is now a free agent after season. So he's an expiring contract. So one, you can package him with like a D'Lo and now you got like just shy of 22 million an expiring contract for a team, right? Get to the trade deadline. There may be teams that just want to kind of unload salary are willing to unload, uh, you know, to get a guy or maybe like a Bruce Brown where Toronto's like, you know, hey, we don't want to take on a bunch of salary because Bruce Brown is an expiring contract. So he could just we could just let him walk. We don't want to take on, you know, 22, 23 million in salary where you could go, OK, well, we'll give you, you know, say a Jalen Huchifino, a D'Angelo Russell and then throw in like a Maxwell Lewis or something or a. Uh, uh, Cam Reddish, right, because he would be expiring. There you go. Now you throw that in, uh, and now you cleared off some extra salary to bring in, like, a free agent or something, you know, uh, uh, or bring in, like, a Quincy Olivari or something. You, you got some flexibility in that regard. Also, it just clears, you know, roughly $4 because the Lakers are supposed to uh, operate as an above-the-cap team, so more likely than not, they'll have that flexibility. Obviously, LeBron James can basically structure his contract. I mean, he can take a vet minimum if he wanted to. I don't think he would ever do that, but he was willing to take, you know, 15, 20 million less uh, to go get various free agents this past offseason. I could see him doing and giving the Lakers the opportunity to do the same next offseason. Uh, but this just, this is good in several ways because of the flexibility, it gives you flexibility. Jalen Nutrafino has just not been what the Lakers expected him to be. He has not been uh, the, the quality of player in which the Lakers need. Now, this does also mean that the Lakers can still keep Jalen Hood Shafino, right? So Jalen Hood Shafino's next next year's contract is like I think 4.4 million. So he's not worth 4.4 million. He's worth probably a minimum. So what the Lakers could do in the offseason, if they want to keep Jalen Hood Shafino, they could just sign him to, you know, say a two-year four million deal rather than a, a one-year four million deal, right? So they could shed, say, two million off of their cap sheet. That's another vet minimum guy, or that's another guy, you know, to put you under the second apron or put you under the first apron, depending on how things shape up and type of trades and moves they make. So this is just more about flexibility. But this doesn't mean that the Lakers are just going to lose Jalen Hood Shafino. Uh, I imagine either A, the Lakers trade him, or B, they re-sign him to a smaller deal. I'm sure that they've talked to Jalen Hood Shafino. I'm sure that they've, you know, had conversations with Jalen Hood Shafino. I don't see a team stepping up and being like, oh, hey, let's give Jalen Hood Shafino $5 million a year or $4 million a year, something like that. He's probably looking at, like, a minimum. Now, again, he's a restrict an unrestricted free agent, so he could do whatever he wants. He could go to a team like the Miami Heat or, you know, just as an example, first team that popped in my head, like a Miami Heat as, like, a free agent and, you know, even if the Lakers are offering more money. So he has now the flexibility to do whatever he wants uh, because he'll be an unrestricted free agent. So if he finds a team that, you know, San Antonio, right, may, may be a better, you know, conversation piece because, you know, San Antonio, they're a young team that's trying to grow and develop and get some young talent and stuff. And maybe they unload a guy or something and, you know, they could bring in like a Jalen Huchofino on the cheap to, to add to their development pool. And we've seen guys, right? Scottie Pippen Jr. is a great example. Right? Terrible with the Lakers. Laker fans are screaming to get rid of him. He ends up going to Memphis. He gets an, a year to just go through his hiccups. Right? He had good games. He had bad games. But go through his hiccups. And then next thing you know, he's getting a new contract. And he earned it. And people are like, wow, the Lakers... They, they really blew it with Scottie Pippen Jr. But a lot of those same people were like, Scottie Pippen's trash. Why is he even on the roster? Because Memphis was willing to let him. Memphis was in a position last year where they, they wanted to take. They didn't care. And it led to Zach Eady, right? So they were looking at it as like, hey, we want to be as bad as possible. So let guys like Scottie Pippen Jr., you know, Jay Huff and guys like that, let them just be free, right? Like, 
hey, they have a bad game. Who cares? Where we, as the Lakers, we're not in that position. We're in a position where we need to win now, where we're trying to win an NBA championship right now. So we're not in the position to let Jalen hood Shafino just ball for, you know, 80 games all season and, you know, go through the, the ups and downs. Or even Max Christie. A lot of people are disappointed in Max Christie right now. Again, I can't get on board on just crucifying Max Christie yet because it's been five games and he went from like not playing anything and having no real role outside of like garbage time to now having to be the sixth best player on the Lakers team. It's a big jump, big hurdle, right? And if you if you, he was on a team like, you know, San Antonio, right? And, and he was playing and he was able to go through those hiccups and those hurdles or a team like Detroit, right? He's going to have games where he's, you know, he gives you 18 points, lockdown defense, does everything, shoots, you know, six of eight, six of eight from three and just looks like everything that we need him to be. And then there's going to be games where he's one of 11, turning the ball over, looks terrible. Scotty Pippen Jr., again, great example. He had games where he was great. He had games where he'd given you 22 and eight, for, for uh, Memphis, right? And then he'd have a game where he was, like, z- giving you a goose egg, have, like, eight turnovers with three assists. He was like, there, it was like, this guy's unplayably bad, right? But Memphis was willing to let him go through that, let him go through his peaks and in, in valleys, right? Let him go through his trial and error because they were in the position to do so. The Lakers aren't, you know? And we want to develop, guys, but we also need to have the patience to develop guys. Guys take years to develop in many ways, right? They're, they're, for every Dalton Connect, there are guys that take time. I mean, Kobe, first three years, just rode the pine. Nothing, right? Like, again, and then he became the greatest Laker ever, right? Now, I'm not saying any of the guys we have are Kobe. I'm just using an example of, like, a guy that people were ready. I'm old enough to remember. People were like, why did we draft this kid when we could have gotten other guys? We traded Vladi. Like, what are we doing? Right? I re- I'm old enough to remember the conversations that people had about a young Kobe Bryant. And then now look at Kobe Bryant. Right? The point is, is like, we, we have to be willing to allow guys to develop. I'm not even just talking about Jalen Hood Jufino. I'm talking generally, right? Because I see people are ready, all ready to ship out Max Christie. Right? Okay, that's fine. If the right deal is there, trade Max Christie. But he's also a 21-year-old kid who, yes, again, has been three years in the league, but he might as well be a rookie. This is his first real opportunity. And he's not being asked to be the eighth, ninth guy. He's asked to be the sixth guy, right? Like Dalton Connect even. Yes, because... Dalton Connect's a rookie, right? So people look at it. Oh, he's a rookie. He's also 24, right? He's three years older than Max Christie. What does Max Christie look like in three years? Right? But are we patient enough and willing to develop him and grow him and allow him to, to go through his bad games, go through his bad stretches, and then reap his good stretches, right? Like, that's something we have to keep in mind as a fandom and as an organization. So, like, getting back to Jalen Huchifino, right? Like, I... Again, I'm not willing to write him off yet. He's been not good, right? He's not. He's been very disappointing, without a doubt, right? But he has good size. He has good tools. He's just got to learn to kind of figure it out. Is that with the Lakers, though? Or is that where he gets traded to another team or he signs with another team that has the patience and can let him grow, develop, and become what we need him to be, right? Like, Because, again, like, Jalen Huchifino coming to the Lakers – didn't get the opportunity his first two years to be bad, right? Like, a lot of rookies do. A lot of rookies get to be bad. I mean, look at this year's draft class, right? Like, Rizache and Saar. Like, Saar's stinking up. Like, no one's talking. He was, what, the number one pick? Like, and no one's talking about him stinking up the joint and just being terrible. But they're in a position where they don't care. They're not trying to win games. So they can let him go through his hurdles. They can let him go through his hiccups. A team like the Lakers, if he was on the Lakers, Lakers probably wouldn't even be able to play him because he's been so bad, right? Like, so what does he look like two years from now? My point is, getting where you get drafted is a very big thing. The idea was that Jalen Trufino, because of his size, right, his strength, his, his, his ability to kind of give you a different look compared to our other point guards, his ability to slot in in other areas, the idea was like, okay, he's a guy that can come in and immediately play a role. A lot of people want Cam Whitmore. Cam Whitmore can't even crack Houston's rotation. 
Right, Cam Whitmore has not been great either. He's had games, he's had moments, he's been better than Jalen Ejofino, for being honest. But people act like Cam Whitmore, superstar out there. Like, no, he's been, he's had his struggles too. If he was on the Lakers, Lakers would be talking about like, why do we draft Cam Whitmore and not Jaime Hawkins? Why do we draft Cam Whitmore and not Pod? Because again, the Lakers aren't in a position to allow him to grow and develop and go through their hiccups. Right? Houston's a team that wants to win. They're not a team that's willing to kind of let him go through his hurdles, right? He starts having a bad game. They just pull, sit him down, right? Like you'll see games where he's, you know, first five minutes, he has like a turnover and they're like, no, on the bench, right? Because they, because they don't want to lose the game. They're trying to win those games, right? Where if he was on a team like, you know, Detroit. Like Cam Whitmore could probably go out there and just play the whole game and stink it up on some games and be brilliant other games. He'd have games. But so Jalen Itrafino would probably be the same. You pro- I guarantee you, if Jalen Itrafino played, you know, 70 games, right, and he was allowed to play 30 minutes a game, he would have, don't get me wrong, he'd have games where he's probably the worst player on the basketball court, but he'd have games where he gives you 28 and 8. And you're like, there he is. But when he's getting spot minutes and he's not really getting a real role and opportunity, it's hard to know what he is. Again, I'm not saying he's not a bust. I'm not saying he's going to be great. I don't know. I just look at the situation. And the situation is he's not. this isn't a place for him to develop. He's not going to get the opportunities he needs to get to really start taking some strides. Great example, again, Scottie Pippen Jr. Great example, Jay Huff, right? Jay Huff was awful on the Awful, awful. Right? Like he was like unplayably bad on the Lakers. And then he went to a team in Memphis who had a season where they were trying to lose games. They were trying to be as bad as possible. Scottie Pippen Jr., guys like Jay Huff, you know, these young guys, Gigi Jackson, guys like that, go play. Gigi Jackson even had big stinkers for Memphis. But he also had some really great games where you were like, wow, this dude might be something great, right? Like, because Memphis was in a position to allow them to do that. Lakers are not in that position. So, which, you know, you want to arguably never really be in that position, <laughs> right? Because that means you're in a position where you're, you're trying to lose. You're bad, right? You want the Lakers to be good. But still, it's just things to keep in mind when you're talking about this stuff. But I do think either Jalen Trevino is likely to get traded because he's now an expiring contract, so I could see the Lakers packaging him and D'Lo as expiring. Once we get closer to the trade deadline, uh, uh, three what is he? Three point three million, something like that. Three point six million. His contract will be gold, right? Because it'll be salary filler uh, to like a D'Lo or something like that. That now you can add to go get that piece or two. So no matter what, this is a win-win for the Lakers because either a they get cap flexibility, b um, they got an extra add-on for a trade, or C, um, they ended up, uh, they can always re-sign him to a lesser deal and then keep him to grow and develop him. So either way, I think the Lakers will be good. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Uh, Do you agree with my points? Disagree with my points? Are you kind of in the middle with my points? Again, I want to be clear. Like, I don't think Jalen Huchifino has been good by any stretch of the imagination. He's been bad. He's been a very bad basketball player. He does not look like an NBA player. But again, my the point that I'm trying to get across is we, we need to be able and allow guys to develop. Right? We need to allow be able to allow guys to to get to that point to where we can figure it out. Right? We're we're very impatient. Not just fans, but the Lakers organization, period, right? We usually just get guys to a point where we could trade them. Right, like to where it's like, okay, a team sees value in them, right? So you need to get to a point where you're willing to develop them. But we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. But anyway, as always, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.